All right, hey everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike Heading here. Got another little mini banjo lesson for you today. I had a request from, from someone in the audience to talk a little bit about how I wear my picks and kind of my basic right hand technique. So this is going to be kind of more a lesson obviously geared towards beginners, um, you know, people that are still getting, getting comfortable using the picks and, and, you know, adapting their right hand technique, especially if you haven't played three finger style before. It, it takes a lot of coordination and a lot of trial and error. So I'm going to give you a couple little tips that helps me. And I will preface uh, them all by saying this is just what works for me. And there's more than one way um, to get to the end goal. But these are my tips that, that work really well for me. And take them for what they are and see if they help you. All right, here's a little lesson on how I wear my picks and my basic right hand technique. All right, so let's talk real briefly about how I wear my picks and kind of my general right hand technique that I use for the banjo. So I use a plastic thumb pick and two metal finger picks, which is pretty normal. Um, I use .025 Dunlap brand. Um, nothing special about that. It's the heavier gauge um, picks. I, I like those a little bit, bit better myself. I use a, a bigger thumb thumb pick. It's got a, a pretty big tongue. It's a Golden Gate brand. Again, nothing special about that. Um, I just like a basic plastic thumb pick and then two metal finger picks. Um, I wear the same same pick on the same finger each time. Um, I've had these these actually two picks for about ten years. Um, I think they're the first two picks uh, finger picks that I ever actually got. And um, I've tried to work in some other sets and they've never never felt quite as comfortable as these ones do. So I've, I've stuck with these. So I've had these ones for a while. Again, I wear them on the same fingers every time to kind of recreate it and um, again, get me feeling comfortable with playing the banjo. So that's what I do. Um, you can see I don't have a ton of the pick exposed. Um, you know, some people wear them maybe a little bit more shallow like that where there's more of the pick exposed. Um, and you have to figure out what feels right for you. Um, my, my thought about that is the more of the, the shallower you wear it, you get more reach with the pick. But the danger is, is that when you're coming back, you know, after you play a string and you bring in your pick back, you're more likely to pull the pick off because you have to get your pick higher because you have more pick poking out this way. Vice versa, if you have the pick too deep, then you have to reach further on your initial pluck because you don't have as much reach with the pick. So I like to have just a little bit, um, kind of what I would call in the middle, but I've definitely seen people that have more of the pick um, exposed than, than I do. Um, I also kind of like to curve the picks kind of to follow the natural um, slope of my fingers. Um, you know, the, the straighter the pick, the more resistance you have and the more curved the pick, obviously the less resistance. So I like, again, find that happy medium. And I'm I'm always kind of bending and tweaking my picks a little bit. Um, the other thing you can see is, I don't know if you can see this from the video, but I wear my picks off to the side. So they're not, they're not straight on if I was holding my hand because I do that because the goal is I want my pick to be picking the string straight on. So I put my hand where it feels comfortable and rather than you know, cranking my hand to get the picks to be straight, what I do is I put my hand where it feels comfortable and then I turn the picks. So it ends up being about like that when when it's all said and done rather than wearing them straight on like like that and then I would have and then I would have to turn my hand to get the picks to be straight. So what I recommend is turn the picks, don't turn your hand. And everyone's a little bit different, you know, in how they want to wear them exactly. But the goal is that you want the pick picking straight, you know, down and straight up. Same with your thumb pick. So, so however you can do that with your hand, um, that's what I would strive for. Um, other things, you can see this little dot. That's where I plant my, my finger. I just plant my pinky personally. Um, different schools of thought. Obviously, some people say you got to plant both fingers because that's what Earl did. Um, for me, planting my ring finger, I tried that and never never felt comfortable for me. It always felt like I couldn't move my, my middle finger um, cleanly when I had both fingers planted. I think my, my tendons are connected in a way or something that it just never felt felt natural for me. So I never, I never did that. I just plant my pinky. I know some people just plant their third finger. Some people plant both. What I would say is do what works best for you. Um, the other thing is I don't I don't turn my hand. Some people bend their hand up more like that. 
I know uh, JD, JD Crow has more of a wrist like that where it's bent up like that. I do more of kind of what I would call the, my, my wrist is flatter um, back here. And that's just what works for me. Um, I tried, you know, doing the JD Crow thing for about, again, 30 seconds or so, and, and that, that hurt my hand. So I, I didn't do that. Um, my my two criteria for, for good right hand technique are, are you getting a good sound and is your hand hurting? Um, and if, if, you're, if you're getting a good sound and your hand's not hurting, I would continue with that um, technique for the time being. And you can always change it as time goes on. But if you're getting a really good sound, but your hand's really hurting every time, you know, maybe it's time to look at something, you know, and change things up a little bit. So I'm always kind of, you know, bending and tweaking my hand a little bit to, again, chase that slightly better sound and keep my hand as relaxed as possible. So that's how I can play faster and for longer periods of time. Okay, so that's kind of my basic right hand technique. Um, the other thing I like to do is I keep my thumb out front. I see a lot of beginners, they get, your thumb gets back here, and then your, your fingers kind of start running into each other. Um, I kind of try and follow the natural order of my hands where my thumb's out front, my index is second, and then my middle is, is last. Um, just like, you know, how it would be if I held my hand out. So even if I'm playing all on one string, like, like just on the first string, you know, I have enough clearance with all of those fingers that I'm not running into them, even if I'm playing all on the same string. You know, and even if I play on all different strings, I maintain that consistency. So, so if I do, if I switch to single string, for example, you know, my fingers aren't suddenly running into each other. Or if I'm doing, you know, Scruggs style, you know, each each finger has its own spot um, to go. And again, everyone's hand's different. Some people's thumb bends backwards. Um, mine, mine doesn't. My thumb just stays straight. I don't have a kind of a hitchhiker's thumb. So um, I just have to, you have to figure out what works for you. And it's a lot of trial and error. But again, the goal is to not have your fingers running into each other. And you're picking all the strings, you know, straight on. So my thumb is picking straight down. And my fingers are picking straight up. And then my hand kind of snaps back into what I would kind of call home base where my my thumbs on the third string my index fingers on the second string and my middle fingers on the first string so after I play a note my hand hopefully kind of snaps right back so I'm always kind of sitting in what I would call home home base you know where I'm ready to play all those all those strings and again I'm, I'm getting familiar with that distance to where I'm not touching any of the strings you know, because otherwise you're going to get some pick noise like that. You know, if you actually touch the strings, so you have to get familiar with how do you how do you hold your hand there without touching any of the strings? And that just takes practice and time with your individual banjo. I mean, my banjo has a little bit wider string spacing than a normal banjo, so that makes it just a little bit easier for me. But you should be able to do that with any any kind of normal bluegrass banjo or claw, or old time banjo. So um, again, that's what I'm. I kind of use that as my guide. I always keep my fingers in home base. So I think that really helps you avoid the flying fingers where, you know, you play a note and then your fingers extend way out like that. Um, so get used to holding them in what I, again, what I would call home base. That really helps me. Other things with right hand technique, back here you, you're, you get a different sound. Where up here it's a little sweeter sounding. Every banjo is a little bit different, but... You know, so if I was playing something down the neck, I might play back here a little bit more, you know. You know, whereas if I was playing up here, you know, up the neck, I might move my hand up a little bit. Again, a common right hand technique is when, you, when your left hand goes up the neck, your right hand, your hands kind of come together. I go back down the neck, I might drop back. And I've got that little dot there, so my hand just kind of normally goes right back to that little dot. Uh, and that will, that's what works for me. So you can experiment moving your right hand around to get different sounds, just like how you can use your voice to, to make different, you know, sounds, where you can use our right hand to develop different sounds on the banjo, depending on what, what sound you're after. Okay, a couple other little tips with the thumb pick. 
you won't be able to see this from the video, but I actually take a, a, a serrated knife and I scratch on the inside of the pick. I do a bunch, you know, a bunch of little cuts one way and then I'll do a bunch of little cuts the other way and I do it on both sides. That just helps me get a little bit of texture on the inside of the pick. So when I put my, my thumb in there, it doesn't move around. Um, I do that especially in the summer when I'm playing outside and it's a, you know, a hot, hot gig and, or something like that. And there's nothing worse than, you know, you're in the middle of your solo and your, and your pick starts moving or sliding and there's, there's not much you can do at that point. So I found scratching some little, some little grooves on the inside of the pick, you don't have to go very deep. Just scratch one way and then scratch the other way and you'll get a little bit of texture in there that you can hold, that will help hold your pick on. And that really helps me. That's, a, that's something I do all the time. The other thing, um, last thing about the finger picks, make sure you're not putting them on backwards. I notice a lot of beginners put them on backwards for whatever reason. I think I did it too. You know, and do, do more of the, the claw, you know, where you're going that way, where you need to put them on the other way. And I don't know why everyone does that. I did it too. But that's just a very common beginner mistake is putting the picks on backwards. You want this flat part to be the same as the flat part of, of your finger. So, so that's a very common mistake I've seen a lot of beginners do. So that's kind of my basic right hand technique. Again, this is just what works for me. I'll preface that. And um, it's not going to work for everyone else. Everyone's hands a little bit different. But again, go after the two things I was talking about. Are you getting a good sound and is your hand hurting? And my right hand technique has definitely changed and improved over time. So, you know, keep chasing that sound and, and that you hear in your head and you're going to adjust your hand accordingly. And as long as your hand's not hurting, you're probably on the right track. All right, hopefully that helps you out. Good luck.